very violent places uh, in the 70s. Um, my my um, people uh, had experience of the violence in, in the north of Ireland that was used against the civil rights movement in, in, in the late 60s and then the early 70s and the introduction of more uh, repressive weapons, uh, riot gear, the RUC being tooled up, uh, the use of plastic bullets and the use of live bullets uh, by, by, by that part of the British state uh, on us. And uh, common knowledge on the streets was that they were using this as a testing ground uh, to, to test out repressive techniques that they would use in mainland Britain uh, when uh, faced by social crisis there. And it's my belief that um, uh, the, the, the resistance movement against the National Front, the rise of the anti-Nazi League in big numbers uh, represented a threat, uh, like the civil rights movement did, um, that the, the British state uh, you know, started to use riot gear and the, uh, and the shields, I think that was first used, was it at Lewisham or at Southall? Um, but you know that kind of lo level of violence being used against political demonstration, um, and you know, was part of that es escalation by by, by the state. Um, and so uh, I just came a little bit after uh, Blair's uh, murder. I mean, I remember the first march that I was on was uh, for Bobby Sands' death in Dundalk, 1981. We about two years after the general strike, actually in Ireland shutting the place down with black flags, but uh, quickly through punk music um, and reggae music, learning about Blair Peach, uh, LKJ's song, Reggae for Peach, uh, was one that was played at every kind of, you know, um, uh, social event and stuff that the left would have in Ireland. Uh, but also uh, the roots, uh, punk rock uh, was also part of the movement, and Jar War and Babylon's Burning, uh, both reference those times as well. And, and, and for me, uh, the Anti-Nazi League and the movement that Blair uh, uh, was part of and created um, uh, had lasting effects on generations still uh, today. Um, I mean, it always um, hurts me that Blair Peach is well known in Ireland and Britain, yet few people uh, in New Zealand know of him. And this is something we should change we should get a large banner with Blair Peach, Oi. Uh, hero, anti-fascist, uh, um, um, and bring it to the teacher strikes, uh, as the uh, you know as socialists and the teachers unions do in Britain, because they've got a huge banner with Blair Peach on it as a hero, you know, and, and that he's well known. And we should actually bring a big banner with Blair Peach uh, on it to the to demonstrations against the alt right that are trying to grow here as well, um, I'm gonna talk about that uh, in, in a wee bit. But um, the, the effect of the Anti-Nazi League and the struggles from Lewisham to Southall and after, um, uh, the British black journalist, uh, Darrell Howe, talked about his first three kids growing up ill at ease in Britain as black British people and the fourth child growing up in peace and happiness and he puts that down to the struggle of the Anti-Nazi League, actually driving the National Front uh, off the streets and creating what is a multicultural uh, 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 country now in, in Britain. And that's the big victory, I think, that that, 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 that uh, conflict in, in the late 70s won. Unfortunately, as long as we have capitalism, this system that doesn't deliver for the working class, uh, in, in this city uh, tonight, there are people sleeping in cars and sleeping in garages and people also paying huge exorbitant rent, over 60% of their income, which is low anyway, uh, and they're getting angry about housing, and they're getting angry about poverty. And if the uh, people that should champion uh, them and should build houses don't do it, then the right comes along and spreads the poison that it spread in every decade uh, that the reason that you can't get a house is because of those fucking refugees and the migrants and the Muslims. And this isn't just coming from the extreme far right. This is coming from the top of society. This is coming from people like the deputy prime minister of this country, who said that every mosque was a, a, a viper's nest from which a many-headed hydra was ready to strike. And we're here about a month after 
uh, someone uh, took those words on face value and went in and machine gunned people, 50 people in the back, uh, some of them three, four and five years old, a massacre that I still think that we're in deep shock and reflection on, uh, but, th but these things didn't happen independently. Somebody created a river for the far right to swim in and uh, to grow in. I'm just back from Australia where I was at an anti-racist conference where I wanted to find, I want to find who Tarrant was working with, um, and he was working with a group called the United Patriot Front, which is led by a very dangerous Nazi called Blair Cotterell in Melbourne, who's a psychopath. And that violent organization, uh, sent, the Tarrant, sent death threats to anti-racist act activists on Facebook two years ago, uh, as, they, as they tried to organize counter demonstrations to their anti-refugee uh, things. But that stuff in Australia didn't happen in a vacuum because the Islamophobia, the racism, the uh, attacks against refugees and migrants are not something that the extreme right just does in, in, in Australia. It comes from the top. It comes from the top. It comes from hard. It comes from the uh, coalition government. Uh, they put people in camps, uh, concentration camps in Manus Island uh, and the rest of it. And then that uh, stuff percolates down. The Islamophobia uh, that we have in our society just doesn't come from the extreme right. It was used to justify the wars and the attacks in Afghanistan and Iraq and the slaughter of millions of people. Uh, why? Because, because we, we demonize these people as terrorists, uh, as people uh, 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 who are potentially uh, our enemies. And that's what we need to challenge. We don't need to just challenge the extreme right who at the minute are growing in this city and they're growing in New Zealand and they might be knocked back a bit by the, uh, by the attack, but they have a network of a few hundred people. And we got a shock when we saw 120 people in Altea Square with Union Jacks saying, free Tommy Robinson. If you don't know who Tommy Robinson is, he's a Nazi from Britain. Free Tommy Robinson, we demand free speech. And this free speech went, argument went on uh, for the months before the attack, um, uh, where we had clickbait Nazis invited over here, uh, uh, Molyneux and, uh, and, and uh, the other one, Southern. Southern. And, uh, you know, uh, from them, oh, the left's against free speech, as if, as if hatred is, happens in a vacuum, as if this is abstract. Well, now we see what those ideas, in the end, end up with. The slaughter in Christchurch. This was not an abstract debate. We were right to oppose these people. We were right to organize. We were right to warn people that if these uh, worms are, are allowed to uh, fester, like Hitler says, they'll grow into a serpent, right? And part of the legacy of Blair Day, uh, Blair's life was that we don't just abstractly engage in politics, that we need to actively oppose them on the streets and challenge them and shut down that space, which I think we did in <coughs> Auckland when we got there with our sound systems that were so loud. Uh, uh, Anu and Barty Kaladi here from the Migrant Workers Association give them a big round of applause <laughs> because you will always see, you'll always see the Indian comrades at the front. All the Indian exploited migrant workers were at the front of the march in, in Auckland because they are the advanced uh, section of the migrant community. You know about the racism and the exploitation and are bringing other groups behind them. And you know what's on the door in Unite. We have that picture of the, of the, the, the funeral of Blair Peach, uh, you know, with the coffin being carried by the Indian workers of Sao Tol, uh, 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 recognizing that socialists, that trade unions were on their side against exploitation, that they were willing also to stand up to the fascist bullies uh, then. And that's, I think, lastly, uh, the, the, the politics that we should take from Blair's life, I think, is how to fight this evil. How to fight the, the evil that comes again every decade. My, my son, Ashim here is 11. He's uh, actively interested in politics himself. I don't force him to join the party. Or anything. <laughs> he brought his Nerf gun along to shoot the Nazis in July. We might reconsider that now, Ashim. But um, Ashim said to me, with the election of Trump, this is bad news, Dad. This is bad news because that guy's evil 
and he's racist and he's going to make this mainstream. And you knew, didn't you? You did your cartoons and, your, and his memes and all in his school. But, you know, quickly you could see that with Trump's election, we started to get this aggressive right-wing element having a go at us in Auckland. We had a friend who's trans, who was knocked down uh, by these people. We had uh, uh, Maori uh, 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 and migrant people attacked by these people about a year and a half ago. And so I think um, that they have a strategy that they want to grow, uh, that they want to blame migrants for the housing uh, problem. They want to demonize Muslims as, as the, uh, the Jews of the 21st century, if you like. They can't get away with uh, using Jews as scapegoats since the Holocaust. So they used the exact same things uh, that were said about synagogues are now said about mosques. You know, the, the, the othering of, um, of Jewish people that happened by classic fascism in the 30s is now happening to our Muslim uh, brothers and sisters in this decade. And we all need to stand up to both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, but this is their key recruiting strategy at the minute. And after that comes the attack on migrants uh, uh, to blame them for the economic problems that are actually caused by our uh, uh, government in action. If you're not going to tax the rich, how are you going to pay our teachers, how are you going to pay our nurses, and how are you going to build houses? Right? And that's the other thing that Blair brought with his anti-fascism was his socialist politics, because he had answers there to the National Front as well. Tax the rich, build the houses, pay the nurses, and pay the teachers. And then um, lastly, uh, you know, when our teachers do go on their super strike, you know, let's do it. Let's get a banner with Blair Peach up there. Yeah. Saying anti-racist, socialist, Kiwi, teacher, teacher. And let's make his name alive for a new generation that is unfortunately going to have to take up the fight that he had against racism, against fascism, and against capitalism. Well,